What's going on guys, it's Greg from East Coast Dyes, and today we have a Theory Thursday episode about one of our most highly requested topics, Six Diamond Mesh. So we get a ton of requests for Six Diamond tutorials, uh, but to really give you a tutorial on every head for Six Diamond is unrealistic. So what I want to do is break down for you guys some of the concepts, uh, the knots I use, and the sidewall hole placement uh, to really string Six Diamond Mesh effectively. So for those of you who don't know much about Six Diamond Mesh as opposed to traditional mesh, it has Six Diamonds across. These are the same exact diamonds that exist in our 12 diamond goalie mesh. Uh, so a slightly different structure where they're actually uh, more square, they're very even, and don't have an elongated diamond shape, uh, which gives them a really unique feel, a great release, and makes them string up very, very easily. So you've seen a lot of people use six diamond in the past, uh, Joe Walters, Kyle Harrison, just to name a few, including myself when I was much younger, uh, in my senior year of high school and freshman year of college. And a lot of people did this because before people more, had more advanced string techniques, it was a great way to get a lot of hold and some more whip without, you know, people didn't string too tight of channels back then when Walters and uh, Harrison and myself were playing in high school and college. Um, so it's a great way to get a lot of hold because the ball sits in these big diamonds and it really holds onto the ball a lot better than 10 diamond mesh would. So when you're stringing six diamond mesh, the first thing you obviously want to conquer is the top string. Uh, so you can see here I've already got the top string strong in the optic. This should work for most heads uh, that are this width. If you have a slightly larger head, uh, it might not work quite as well like a defensive oriented head. Um, but this is a five diamond top string. So you're gonna use the row across that has five diamonds folded onto itself. And we have to do here is you see the middle diamond. So one, two, three is split right in the middle of the head. And you actually have a situation where you have to split diamonds between top string holes. So you have uh, one diamond on the outside that you use that diamond plus the second one on the first top string hole. So you essentially do the same knot you would on a normal top string, but just splitting it between two diamonds as you go to make five stretch across very nicely. And using five is gonna make it nice and tight and cinched up along the top. So the top string is fairly straightforward and a lot like 10 diamond mesh. The side balls are the same way. You have the same concepts that you wanna follow. You wanna pull the mesh down tightly at the top to create a flat part and then bunch it up at the bottom to create your pocket. So that's gonna give you uh, a channel so the ball come out straight through the middle and then enough pocket depth and definition to give you the right amount of feel and hold. The main difference here is it's very easy to make way too tight of a channel with six diamond, which you definitely want to avoid. Tight channels and six diamond do not go together very well at all. So you want to make sure you're not pulling the mesh down quite as tightly as you would with 10 diamond. So here we have, I have the first diamond locked onto the side and the second diamond pulled down um, almost as tightly as it will go. And you'll see through this whole sidewall, I'm using SIs, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, so you wanna have the first and second diamond pulled down tightly, and the third one, you may wanna make sure it's just, it's not pulled down as tightly as it can go. It's just a little bit looser, because if you pull it down tight, you're gonna get a really flat part here, and the ball is just gonna get caught in the channel. And then as you move down, uh, you want your fourth diamond to be pretty loose. You can see I've actually got it pretty bunched up there. This is to avoid that tight channel problem. And then you have to make sure you space your diamonds out appropriately so you don't get too much bunching and too defined of a pocket or too deep of a pocket, which can happen quickly because these diamonds are so big. So you see we have the fourth one that's a little looser and then coming down we have a bunch here and then a bunch here, uh, but still pretty evenly spaced to make sure that we get a nice even pocket distribution and channel. For the knots for six diamond, I really like to use SIs all the way down. And the reason for that is because the diamonds are so large the SI is going to allow the diamond to sit perfectly right in the middle. If you were to use interlocks, uh, it might not seat properly and the big diamond might float a little bit up and down because it has so much space there in the diamond. So for me, SIs work well. They lock it down, they keep it centered uh, and create the right depth and channel. And for the bottom string, pretty much the same as 10 diamond. It's pretty simple. Um, you just weave it through. I have it done on the last six diamond row that I use for the sidewall to keep the depth in check. Uh, if you add an extra row in for the bottom string, it might get illegal very quickly. Overall, I used eight total diamonds down the side with a five diamond top and a bottom string on the six diamond row. Just to give you a reference of how many diamonds you want to use to create a pocket that is just within legal depth. So for shooting string setup, it's best to keep it simple, especially with the new NCAA regulations coming to play. It doesn't give you that many options, and with six diamond you have even less. So what I have here with the five diamond top is two five diamond straight shooting strings that are weaved. Six diamond gives you plenty of room to weave one uh, pretend there's a diamond around the outside between the sidewall and the sidewall string, which is important to keep that tension right here so they don't get too loose. Um, they do have a tendency to get a little bit, uh, you know, shifty on you because the diamonds are so large, they have a little bit of ability to move. But in a six diamond pocket, your shooting strings shouldn't be that important. 
because it's really the mesh that's going to create that hold and create that width that you need. So these are just to ease the ball out of the pocket a little bit and just dial in the finer points of your release point. Uh, so again, simple, two straights, weaved, nothing complicated there. So I hope this video helped you guys learn a little bit more about stringing six diamond. A lot of people don't like to use it because it is a little bit more difficult to string and it really does have a lot of performance benefits. So if it's something you think you might be interested in, I highly suggest you give it a try. Uh, give it a try stringing it up, don't get frustrated. Uh, you might have to adjust the pattern a little bit. I had to adjust this one to get it dialed in because it is just a little different, but with time, you can definitely learn it. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't, and have a great day.